All right, so yes. these are some shots uh, from Andy Lay. Andy's a very good aviation photographer. He's just a really good uh, photographer all around, and I've known Andy for years, so it was fun to get to see him again. But uh, he's taking all kinds of different shots, and I just want to run through them for you real quick because same guy, same place, and, and getting very, very different shots. Uh, this is uh, those, those planes cutting the ribbon. They fly so low, they cut a ribbon held by these guys. He nailed that time. Now, this is a, yeah, what he did here, this is one where he shot the sequence, and then he's able to drop in so you can kind of see what before, during, and after. Uh, these are like a multiple. I've done uh, shots like this uh, more time than oh, we have right the same now. Plane. It's the it's same the plane. It's the same plane, but in three, uh -huh. different, three different spots. Uh, very nice, Andy. This is the so what this guy does is he pretends to be drunk and steal a plane, and uh, and he bounces all over the runway and everywhere and and people that don't realize it's a, a gag are freaking out and the the announcer's acting like it's all really happening but this guy's an incredible pilot, uh, and that's what he's he scrapes the wings and does it, it's and he he plays the drunk really well but he he does incredible stuff in that in that in that plane. And again, you can see another view from another photographer. Ultralight. Ultralight, yes. Here, you know, shooting ultralights is a lot of fun, especially in the evening. And this is down at the reencampment area where uh, they have reenactors come in and Andy set up for this shot. We talked about it, uh, which is really cool. There's one from the nighttime show, I guess. This is that, yep. Love this shot. Love, love, love it. And if I remember Andy talking to us about this, it was low. I'm not sure if he had his platypod or not, but he, he, he just went he behind the low. Pod. Okay. He, love that shot. And a wide angle on that one. And uh, look at that. Now, I'm not sure what lens Andy was using, but Andy was uh, shooting a Sony A A9, I believe. I think he had the... I think Sony has one from 150 to 600. I won't. Um, yeah, probably. Or he could have You've been using the, the Sigma or something. Here's another platypod. No, I think... Real low. Yeah. I love that you can see inside the wheel well so well. Look at that. Sharp, sharp as attack. Now, this shot you see here, Paul tried, Paul attempted and came pretty close uh, with, when we get through his shot, something very similar, because he saw this from Andy the night. Each night we would sit back and we would kind of look at our images, and it's, sometimes it's a game of one-upsmen, but other times it's just, wow, look what I got. And then the next yeah. day, you go out and try to try to get it. Yeah, at the end of every day, we'd all go back to the house, sit around the dining room table, everybody with their laptops open, you know, bringing in the images and looking at them and sharing tips and sharing ideas and laughing. And it's it's one of the most fun parts. It's the real social part of it is is what happens after dinner. Uh, is everybody just sitting up till three in the morning, two thirty <laughs> in the morning, just working on your images and laughing and just having fun. It, it's it's it, it is uh, what I love about it. I always say I love golf because golf is a social sport. Like you spend more time actually riding in the cart and talking on the green and talking at the tee than you actually do hitting the ball. Aviation photography is the same way. It's something to be shared with, with other people and you spend a lot of time. I mean, planes aren't just flying nonstop. You know, there's, there's gaps in between them and, Plenty of times where you're just kind of hanging out and trying different stuff, and it is, it is an awful lot of fun to do it in a group. It really is. Here's another nice shot. Look at that nice propeller spin, sharp as a tack. All right, so that's that's Andy. So uh, let me go back. Just say I really enjoyed. I was looking for graphical shapes and graphical lines, and really focused on composition. The planes are all sitting on the ground now. The planes are surrounded by thousands and thousands of people. There's people everywhere. You don't just walk up and there's a 
plane all by itself and there's no one around it. <laughs> uh, I sat there trying Not to get shots happen. of spitfires and stuff. And, and, and Andy Lay had the greatest way of getting people out of the way. So I set my platypod up and I'm behind a spitfire and I'm trying to get this one shot. And I have so many shots I haven't looked at. I have literally probably 150 shots that are marked as tagged to look at. I just haven't had the time. Uh, I just got back, right? So anyway, um, uh, Andy would go and there'd be people standing there and he would just herd them. He would just walk up and just move them. He wouldn't say, can you move? And he would just kind of walk to where the people had to move. And he would clear everybody out and then you got the shot. So I actually did get some shots with nobody there. Now there was a couple times where Andy did walk up to somebody, but it would be a very interesting technique he would just walk towards them and they would move and he would just walk towards somebody else and they would move. He walk towards them. And then all of a sudden there's a spitfire and there's nobody there. But my idea, my whole idea behind this was, was to get the platypod low and aim up. So you don't see the crowds and the concession stands and the other jets and the other stuff behind it. Cause that is the challenge of shooting the statics. There's people and other planes everywhere. So finding a position, what was, what I did like was they were in the grass. So almost all the time the shots were in the grass so you could make it.